Welcome to another edition of the Coach Ken Erickson Show. The Bulls are conference tournament bound, heading out to Tulsa after wrapping up the regular season championship and getting the one seed. Coach, congratulations on that. This was a really interesting year coming into this year. You had new assistant coaches. Who's going to step up in the circle? I mean, you had some question marks, and here you are, 43-13 and 13 and a one seed. Anything surprise you about that? Um, everything. Everything. Um, you know, it was kind of like we, we started with a clean slate on August 25th and uh, started doing some real intricate implementation of, of philosophy more than the skill sets. Uh, it was really dealing with um, adversities, you know, and, and dealing with challenges and not making excuses on anything. and. And, and taking an approach of a so what mentality, you know, let's move on to the next pitch, let's move on to the next play, and, and there's always something else going on. And, you know, you look back now uh, on what we were trying to do as a coaching staff and what uh, Tommy Santiago and, and Jess Moore and Avon Meacham and even Lauren Gibson brought to the table with, with that whole situation and how it played out uh, throughout the year for us has been nothing short of uh, if it's somebody had said, this is what's going to go on this year, and this is why we're doing what we're doing right now, they made a million dollars in Vegas. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a, a great journey uh, up until this point of what went on and how we dealt with the, the ebbs and the flows of not just softball, but of life. And uh, our team matured exponentially since August, and I'm very, very proud of them. Every team develops their own characteristics over time and you don't know right. at the beginning how the team's going to come together, what they're going to be like. What are the characteristics of this team that's allowed them to excel? You know, it's that, that question is always, you know, the question beginning of the year, as you know, um, is, you know, what's the makeup of your team going to be? You know, how do you define them? Uh, are they looking for an identity type of situation? Jim, I want to be honest with you on, on this group. I don't know. I still don't know, but what I do know, as far as all the coach speak stuff that go on, but what I do know is, is this has probably been the most familial group of people. Um, everybody has their dysfunctions here and there, but for these guys to confront conflict right away and put it aside and have that amnesia type of mentality and all this type of stuff, if you wrap it, I don't know the definition of a word. You know, I keep using the word maturity, but it's beyond that. It's it's like these guys are old souls, you know, and uh, they get life more than any other team I've had to deal with. So I can't put a defining moment on these guys except uh, I, you know, I love every one of them, and, and hopefully they have that same type of love for each other. In talking specifically about Meredith's illness, mm -hmm. athletic director Mark Harlan said if there was one team that was capable of dealing with something like that, it was the softball team. That's yeah. high praise. I think it's a tremendous uh, amount of high praise for young people between the ages of 18 and 22. And there's a big space at 18, 19, and 21, 22. Um, and, and for people to recognize that, especially for him who's been around a little bit, you know, in other athletic programs and departments and so forth, I think it says a lot about those young people in that locker room, you know. And, you know, we are teachers. I mean, the coaching stuff, they know how to play ball, you know, but the teaching part of how to deal with all this stuff, um, I think that makes the coaching staff feel good about what they're trying to accomplish. The wins will take care of themselves. The school board always does, you know, on your talent levels and, and, and your commitment. But you don't prepare for those type of games, you know, the, the debilitating situations that could happen to teammates or tragedies that occur during the way. And, by no stretch of imagination, this is a tragedy. This is a heck of a challenge. And every time you hear Meredith talk about it, or you hear our girls talk about it, it's, we are going to beat this. You know, and that's, that's pretty special. That's really special. We have talked about the beginning of the year, the start at 2-7, and seven, and then coming back 41-6 and six since then. <laughs> Looking back now, can you find a time, an event, a game, something, that made you feel early in the season, all right, we're okay. Uh, yeah, I can. I can tell you exactly what it was. It was that Tuesday after that first weekend. You know, we come out, I think we were one in, in five, or one in four after that first weekend. And we came out to practice on Tuesday after getting our, uh, our butts handed to us two times during that weekend. 
And our girls get, were, were not happy, they were angry, and they got back to work. And I, you know, and I, I turned to Tom and I went, I think we're gonna be okay. We just gotta get the worm to turn for us a little bit, because we did run into some bad luck during that time. It wasn't like we were awful, awful. You know, we just, we couldn't get a break. You know, we hit balls at people. We were giving up some runs and walking some people, but we weren't awful, awful. Um, and then the next weekend we come out and I think we were, I wanna say maybe one in three or, or something like that the next weekend. And we played really well, but we didn't get a bunch of W's on the board. Um, that Tuesday practice again, we come out. And, and at that point, you know, when they're going into two weeks and they're ended up two and seven after two weeks and they're still relentless, we needed a spark, and uh, it was a total team effort against the, the next game. I think we played Jacksonville, who had just beaten some pretty good teams. And uh, but it was that Tuesday after the first weekend. You could tell these, these guys were they, were they were bringing their lunch pails. Now the Bulls win the regular season conference championship. They go to Tulsa as a one seed. We'll talk a little bit about the conference tournament coming up later in the show. When we return, we will visit with senior catcher Leanne Spivey, USF's brand new all-time home run leader, when the Coach Ken Erickson Show continues. University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Welcome back to the Coach Ken Erickson Show. Senior catcher Leanne Spivey joins us. It has been quite a year for Leanne as the Bulls are heading to the conference tournament as a one seed. She is the new USF all-time home run leader. She got a ring yep. without going to the conference tournament. Yep. Not a bad season. Has this been fun this year? Um, it's been an excellent season so far. Uh, as a team, we're gelling a lot better together than we have before in the past and I think that's made it a lot more fun to play games and obviously it's fun when you're winning but to really have a strong bond with your teammates makes it a lot more fun to come out and play every single day. It's just us now so you can tell us yeah. the truth. Did you see the engagement coming? I honestly I had no idea whatsoever and I for some reason you know I started off with a rough start this season with my batting and everything like that so I thought it was my dad's some plan that he had in order to get me out of my slump with all these people being there. And next thing you know, at the end of the game, when Ken told me to turn around and I saw Nick standing there on the field, I knew then, and that's when I started bawling hysterically. But from the whole time that I started seeing random people showing up to the game, I was thinking like, this is something with my dad trying to get me out of this slump. And it worked. <laughs> One of the great but. moments of USF softball season this year. You are now the home run leader. And I know you're team oriented and you're thinking about wins and you're thinking about championships. At the same time, there have been a lot of softball players come through this program. You've hit more home runs than any of them. What does that mean to you? Um, it's an honor to me. Honestly, I think that if you're going into your at bats, really just trying to throw the barrel at the ball like coach teaches us to do, good things are going to come out of that. And if you've noticed this year, I mean, we've kept up our team average of home runs is keeping up with the best of the teams out there and I think that really shows you what we're doing as a team and just hard work's going to pay off and I'm just happy that we're going to the postseason and that's all I'm really looking at right now. Picked fourth in the preseason mm -hmm. poll, did that not sit very well with you guys? Absolutely not. As soon as those came out for our team we were thinking that you know, we were here, we knew what we could do, we just need to show everyone else what we could do, and it's not going to be handed to anyone, and I think that our team really showed this year that we're coming out to play ball, and we're ready to win some ball games, and that's what we're going to continue to keep doing. Thanks for taking time for us. Have a great tournament out in Tulsa. No problem. Thank you for having me. Leanne Spivey joining us. Stay with us. We will preview the conference tournament with Coach when we return after this. The 
University of South Florida is a regional powerhouse with global significance, leading advances that are changing the world. Now a leader among the nation's universities in research, healthcare, and just being cool. The place where young men and women train to become the best. This is where the bulls run. Thanks to Leanne Spivey for joining us on the Coach Ken Erickson Show. You know, you look back at the, the home run record, and Courtney Salvarola said it and just thought, that's, that's going to last a while. Yeah. It lasted two years. <laughs> Here we have a new leader. Yeah. Really remarkable. Yeah, no, she, well, she is the epitome of you want to put hard work into something, you're going to get something out of it. You know, you want to make sure it's still fun as you're doing it and have passion for it. She's, she's your poster child for those type of things. So, you know, um, she was a freshman, I think, when Sal Rola was either a junior or a senior. Can't remember exactly right now, but um, that group uh, that, that came through, Spivey and Nunn and Santos, you know, they never had anything handed to them. Um, it wasn't like you walk in here and all of a sudden you're this and that you're that. And, and my philosophy has always been you do more, you get more. I make no promises for you. And, um, but what you saw with Leanne is nothing but hard work and determination and the ability to continue to have fun, blow off a bad day, can't wait to get back on the ball field tomorrow and play. Um, and that's the reason she has been successful. More than the home runs, okay? Uh, you take a look at her runs batted in, and she is in the, in the realm of the NCAA where we are at 56 game schedules. You know, before you could play 65, 70 games, but she has kind of like really I think she's at like 160 RBIs in four years, which the schedule we play, if you're knocking 40 RBIs a year, you're doing a pretty darn good job. And so as a catcher that drives in runs, hits over 300, has the power home runs, throws people out, steals bases, you know, and then one of the reasons why she got drafted in the pros because she's a heck of an athlete, but she is the type of kid I hope every player desires to be. And uh, if they do, they're going to they're be successful has a chance to become the Bulls' all-time RBI leader before this season is done as well. Well, the Bulls will head out to Tulsa for the conference tournament soon prior to that. On Sunday here in Tampa, you have a big event coming up. We do, and it, it's a fundraiser that uh, not just the softball community, but the athletic community in Tampa and nationwide, and the softball schools nationwide. We go from the state of Washington, all the way to the state of Maine, down to Florida and across to Southern California with people who have sent um, stuff to, to, to be part of the silent auction for Meredith Bissett's uh, fundraiser, cancer fundraiser on Sunday, 4.30 p.m. at the softball field, right after the baseball game. Um, we have a home run derby and uh, a, a lot of uh, athletes from this department and some coaches from the department, some softball players from the past, uh, national players. and pro players and you never know who else is going to show up uh, to hit in the home run derby. It's going to be a great event. Starts at 4.30. Um, it, I'm so humbled by what's been sent. And then we have some major league guys sending stuff and then Derek Jeter sending stuff and Smoltz is sending stuff and John Gruden involved. I mean, so um, it's been humbling, but it, it shows that, uh, you know, when somebody in the athletic world um, people in the athletic world are, are not afraid to step up and, and help out and uh, it's a great cause uh, to try to divert some of the expenses for the family as it's been documented as Meredith has to go to Boston she's from North Carolina spend a lot of time up there they have to get an apartment and she's gonna go for a treatment radiation surgery recovery the whole process that goes on and insurance pays for the procedures but they don't pay for a lot of other things so we're trying to make it easy for the family that way but the USF community and everybody inside this building and department as you know has taken a uh, special interest in, in what's going on. So we're expecting a lot of people come out, a lot of fun. It's right after the baseball game, as I said. I know it's Mother's Day, but take your moms to brunch and then come out and, and help out a, a great cause later on in the afternoon. 4.30 on Sunday. All right, on to the conference tournament. You are not supposed to be the number one seed, <laughs> but you are. Handicap the field for us. What do you think heading into this one? Uh, you know what? It's uh, I think we still approach the situation just like we're chasing something else. And uh, we've never, through the whole year, never put 
like, okay, we're in this position to do this, we're in that position to do that. We're just playing that ball game as it goes that day. So we know that on Friday we have a ball game and we don't know who it's going to be against. As you know, the tournament, uh, having a bye, you've got four teams playing um, prior to that, I think, right? Four or six, I'm not even sure, to tell you the truth, Jim. Well, you got teams playing before that, and I know we're going to play one of them on Friday. And then uh, if we win that ball game, we play Saturday, and hopefully we earn that championship game to win it. But it, it gives you an extra day to rest. It gives you an extra day to practice. Uh, and, and our season, because we have a bye this upcoming weekend, was shortened more than anybody else. So we condensed a lot of games in a short period of time, and a week is a long time in athletics. So for our kids to take a breather right now is very, very important. And the, the interesting aspect of the last weekend that we played, um, we had to close the deal and we did not play well on Friday night. We had a lot of energy that just zapped down. We're in finals, we're coming off the road for seven straight days. Meredith situation, emotional roller coaster type of deal. And um, we didn't play well, but what we did on Saturday to come back and win that um, said a lot about this team. And then I think the air kind of went out a little bit going into Sunday. It was also senior weekend. Boy, you had so much going on. Um, no excuses uh, for a team that's trying to get to the championship. But a lot was thrown on this team. And as you already mentioned, for them, I had to sit them down afterwards on Sunday and go, guys, I know you're angry at the world right now, okay? But you just won 41 out of 47 games. Take it in perspective. And, you know, they were all looking at me like, yeah, okay, coach, you know, time to shut up and uh, when's the next game? So we feel pretty good about what's going on. And they're, they're, they're chomping at the bit to win the, to win the tournament. The next game is in Tulsa, conference tournament. Coach, have a great trip. Good luck out there. Thank you for everything, man. Appreciate it. Head coach Ken Erickson, we will continue to follow USF softball through the conference tournament. See you again soon on the Coach Ken Erickson Show.